What's up guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing Toge Inumaki. Um, toge, Toge, I'm not sure how to pronounce it really. T-O-G-E <laughs> from Jujutsu Kaisen. So I am on landscape orientation paper, landscape paper, sideways. Uh, definitely use a pencil for this and hit pause if I go too fast. Use that pause button, you know, help yourself out. Um, so let's go, let's do it. Center point to my page is about here, okay? So we've got close up on his face, right? So real big eyes, right? So the center of my page will be probably where his nose will end up being, right? Might do his nose first, actually. So right in the center point here. I was gonna start with the eyes, but we'll start with the, we'll start with the nose, just because it's conveniently right in the middle. So we'll just do this sort of curving wavy line for the side of his nose here and then we've got like a nostril line just there and then the bridge of his nose will go diagonal up this way right, right and then another nostril would be about here okay so roughly that's like the center, right? And the nose goes diagonal. So you can see the diagonal sort of line for the face when we're that close up, head tilt and things like this, right? So if we're diagonal that way, that means we're diagonal on the eyes this way. So like straight head would normally be this way, but we're gonna like tilt it this way, okay? So we'll go over here and do this eye. So first we go diagonal up and we're gonna thicken this line up and then diagonal over. Classic sort of anime eye shape, right? So you just thicken this up then. Right, thicken that up and then we'll thicken this up. And because we're so close up on him, we can actually see his eyelashes. So a couple of these spike up, coming down, maybe three. Right, and then you just color this in. Right. So then bottom eyelid curves down around here. Right. Curves this way. Right, and then we have, you could go the whole way, but it's kind of done in this style, kind of a broken line, right? So it kind of just goes to here. And we have some small little eyelashes sticking off. Three, uh, three there, three there. His iris then, big circle. Just there, kind of closer to the top than the bottom. We're not like bang center. It's kind of like he's looking up a little bit. So, and then his pupil, just there. And you can color this black. And his the edge of his iris line actually looks a bit thicker. So I'll just double this up. I'll just go around again. I do like doing the close-ups. They're kind of they're kind of fun because you know you can get more detail and stuff like that. So it's top eyelid line. So you've the same as his eyelash line. So we'll go diagonal and then across like so. And his eyebrow above there. So we'll go just sort of a tick line, so just kind of coming across here. And then we'll do line like so, and then somewhere to color in. So like, just like, comes all the way back to a point back here. Now, so we're in three quarter pose, right? So what that means is this side of his face is twice the size of this side of his face, right? So that means you can only see three quarters of his face. So that means this eye is smaller than this eye. Right. 
So it's kind of tricky. It's the hardest pose to draw. Um, straightforward is like easiest and then profile. But we're in three quarters. So we can see some of this side of his face. But because we're in perspective, you know, things are pushing away. It's smaller. It appears to be smaller. It's an illusion, right? So the width of his eye roughly will fit in between, right? So here to here will fit there, right? Well, like barely. So it starts, it's pretty tight, but it like starts about here. So if I was to measure this, it would fit just in there, okay? So we're lucky enough that it does fit. Sometimes they don't, but in this image, it seems to. So that's where we're starting. And we're up higher because we're on the diagonal. So the eye starts higher up and then we curve it over. All right, we're slightly smaller now than this eye. So we'll just thicken this up again and add a bit of a spike just coming off here. All right. And then, so the bottom eyelid comes around here. Again, it's kind of a broken shape, so you don't have to like go the whole way, See, like this. And we'll add some eyelashes just sticking off. Like that. And iris, like a big circle. And again, I'll thicken up this line because it's a heavier line weight. And pupil. Like so. Do, do, do. I'm going to roughly try and get them the same size. Right, and then eyelid line, again, sort of a similar sort of shape, right? So just like from here, over, like that. And then this line, up to there, and some more to color. So you can see the diagonal now, and this eye is a little bit smaller than this one, right? Just a little bit. It's pretty close, but it is smaller. But three quarters. Stops about here, width-wise. Right, mouth. So, bumping, mouth line, comes across, and down like that. You want to, you could do the open mouth, you know, where you see his tongue and you can see the tattoo on his tongue and stuff. But I'm doing it from a closed mouth image, so. Um, and then bottom lip line just here. And we got like his collar coming across his face here, so we can't really see his jaw. But we can see some of his chin. Just down here. Right. Proportion wise now, eye to nose. Right, top, I'd say top eyelash line is about the same as nose to chin. Here to here, about the same as here to here. Roughly. So you'd like to this nostril. Right, so you want this to be about halfway between here and here. And then nostril to bottom lip, about the same as bottom lip to chin. So the bottom lip line is about halfway between nose and chin. Approximately. Okay. So we can't see his jaw on this side, but we can see it up here. So we'll go diagonal, stopping about nose level, and this is where you change direction. So you start to curve around like this, around for his cheek, side of his head, and we just bring it up. Like so. He has another symbol here. It's in green or purple, it's colored in, but I'll do it in black just so we can see it, right? So like an oval, small oval here. 
I'll color this in black. It should be purple, I think. And we'll go, yeah, it is. Around it again. So he's a cool character. I hope we get to see more of him in the next seasons. And then, so this will go like zigzag into here. So we'll go out, down, and then into here. I just thicken this up as well. Bring this a bit closer to his mouth. Ah, that'll do. Um, right, we'll do some of his collar and then his hair, starting with his fringe. So his collar comes out this way. And then it'll come across the top of his head. Top of his head? No, his jaw. Come across the bottom of his head. Sorry. Across here. And this will go eventually in behind like his head back here. We got like his ear and hair and stuff inside here. So we'll do his fringe that comes all the way across the top of his head, right? So we got, we'll start with a spike here. So this goes up, let's say beyond his ear. All right, and then a smaller one here. So we're gonna spike all the way across. And in here we can see some of his ear. A little bit, and there's like some earlobe and some bones and ligament lines and stuff like that. And we'll just do the rest of his hair then coming across. So, So this then starts to go, so these are like over this, and then we start to go right across. And if you go over any eye lines, you can color over them or erase them. Across like so. Up to here. Down to there. Mm. Oh, no, what way does that go? Oh yeah, I'm right, that way. This one then curves down. So remember like hair moves doesn't have to be exactly like mine. You know, you can be slightly different as long as you just get the spikes going across the front of his forehead. Hair like blows in the wind, you know. It's always moving in the anime. So it's, it's not like, like this all the time. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Some characters do like, you know, like Dragon Ball characters and stuff. Especially when they're in like Super Saiyan or that hair doesn't move. <laughs> so should move, but it doesn't. Saving on the old animation bills, you know. Right, that's pretty much his fringe. Um well there's a few more actually coming going this way and it goes behind his head eventually it goes off the top of my page this is it's from a close-up of him so we can't really see the top of his head so I'll just fit in whatever I can just goes up off the page that way and some more back here Right, so he's pulling his collar off this way. So I guess we'll finish, we'll finish, what do we do? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do the hand last. We'll kind of get his collar done and we'll do this side of his body and stuff first. So the collar comes out here. We'll kind of bump it down. We got like lots of fold lines and things because everything's being sort of pulled this direction, right? So, shoulder comes off here off the page and there's like 
fold lines there, right? And then this should have a fold line going this way. just go this way and then so the center line of his collar so it comes down here squeeze down up and then this will go up like so and we're going to start to go back this has been pulled towards his hand right so this like comes up here starting to be pulled up this way and we got like an extra edge line on this collar like a seam or something going all the way off this way so the hand is up here somewhere right in the corner there's a seam on this just goes into here somewhere four line another four line Another four line here, four line there. <clears throat> so his collar comes around his neck, sort of, see, goes into his face there, right, and comes down, down to like here. And we can see like collarbone. So his collarbone go, always goes towards the shoulder. So his, his shoulder's about here, see that? And then, Adam's apple or something there. And then the other side of his collar, it's been pulled this direction. So that's like the width of it. And it does have like an extra, or does it? No, but I'll give it one because I've started giving it one. It doesn't have a, an edge line. <laughs> and we can just see his ear just there. And we got like some bones and ligaments and things inside. There and like a sideburn, maybe there. All right, so finish that into there. So the hand is up here somewhere. Uh, right, I'll just do his sleeve so we can see like his sleeve sort of bumping in the wind coming down here. So getting things like scale and stuff right for drawings like this is a bit tricky but it's, it get, things get so it's re, been pulled back real far so things get smaller when they go further back and that comes up to there and we go down like that just for a seam or something okay uh, right so I'll just we'll just do the fist right so the fist is in here so Knuckles, so we'll just do four knuckles, bumping, like this. One, two, three, four, right? And this is his pinky, so we'll go up and around. Change direction here for the knuckle. And then bump around four knuckles again for the other side. So these ones are kind of like hills, you know, on the opposite side. This one comes around and down like that. So general shape. And then we'll add fingers. So we go up and in. Might be like a shadow here or something. And then around. Same sort of thing here. Let me go up. And around to there. thumb will come out the side and the thumb goes down in behind this somewhere back here right, so this will go into his hands then and this comes up here and his arm 
pulls off to his elbow out the back like that and so we have to bring his arm now down into this t-shirt part so we have to do a line coming down into here this is his bicep right down into there and then we need like so the fabric's been pulled this way so we need to show that it's been pulled that way right so you could do like these stretch lines you know sort of everything sort of going in that direction right have to do too much that's it that's enough um, need more all right I think I'll leave it there that's how to draw toge from Jujutsu Kaisen close-up hope it's helpful guys thanks for watching see you in the next one bye